Hi, welcome to the Customer Solutions Center at Dell headquarters. I'm Mike, this is Pallavi. We are here to talk to you about the details of the PowerEdge XC9680. So Pallavi, why don't you tell us about this server? Sure. The XC9680 is a 6U two-socket, completely air-cooled platform featuring HDX, H100, 8-way SXM GPUs, or NVIDIA HDX, 8-way A100 SXM GPUs. Awesome. So why don't you start at the front and let's just walk through the specs. Sure. So here, on the top to you, here you can see we have uh, support for 8U.2 NVMe Gen 4 drives. And in the lower for you, you can see we have support for up to 10 PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slots. Wow. Okay, so I see these PCIe slots are grouped in sections. Is there a reason for that? Yes. So behind each of these groupings, we actually have PSBs. So we have four PCIe switchboards, and each of these PCIe slots are directly connected to the PSBs. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, the eight SXM GPUs are also connected to those boards. Okay. And the drives are also connected to the PSB boards. Okay, great. So we can get GPU direct out of our PCIe slots and to our local storage directly from the GPU without having to go to the CPU? That is absolutely right. And that's what the Gen 5 PCIe switch architecture enables us to do. Awesome. All right, so what's going on up here? On the top to you, as I mentioned this, we have the drives and then we have the six internal fans that are used for cooling the top tier here. Okay. So in the top to you, we have the two Intel Xeon scalable processors and we have 32 uh, DDR5 DIMMs. So I see you don't have all of them populated. Is there a reason for that? Right. So you could do 16 DIMMs or 32 DIMMs depending upon your workloads that you're going to run with this server. Okay, so one DIMM per channel with 16. Yes. Okay. And what is this board that looks like it's above the motherboard here? So that's the power distribution unit. And I think we should just turn around the server so we can see the PSUs here. All right. So we have six PSUs, each 2,800 watts. Uh, the regular 240 volt AC PSUs okay. uh, powering this server here. And then we also have optional LOM and optional OCP slots here. And then we have the iDRAC and the USB and VGA ports. So up here, essentially an R760 with all the pillars of Dell security management. Exactly, containment. you got it, Mike. Okay, so wh what's this guy here in the middle? So that's the bus. N1 M.2 NVMe drives, and you can do RAID 1 with this one. Okay, just throw your OS on there, use the other drives for performance. Yeah, and down here is the 4U module, and you can see here there are 10 fans, and this is actually going to cool the H A100 or H100 SXM GPUs. So if you pull out the fans here, you would be able to pull out the GPU sled. OK, so you're saying the GPU sled fits under, under here in this section, about here. That's right. So let's go ahead and move on then to that unit and take a look at that. All right, Pallavi, so we're, now we're looking at the eight-way board from NVIDIA. So yes. H100s? Yes. So this is NVIDIA's HDX eight-way H100 SXM baseboard here. And so now I'm seeing eight very tall heat sinks that are all alike and then four that are different. Can you tell me what these four things are in the front? We have, as you rightly identified, we have the eight GPUs here, and these are the heat sinks to cool those 700 watt TDP GPUs. Right. And then here we have four NV switches, and these are the heat sinks for those NV switches. Okay, NV switch, what is that doing on the board? The SXM GPUs actually communicate with each other, and what that means is if you want to train a really large model, each of these GPUs has 80 GB memory. And so that means if you look at it as a single giant GPU, 
it's 640 GB of memory, which means you can train a really large model within a single node. And these NV switches enable these GPUs to communicate with each other at 900 gigabytes per second bandwidth, which is 7x times the PCIe Gen 5 bandwidth. Wow, okay. All right, let's turn this thing around and look at the other side. So Pallavi, now we're just looking at the heat sinks for the eight-way uh, GPUs without the NVLink heat sinks in the way. What's going on with these connections in the front? Yeah, so these connections are the ones that are used to connect to the PSV board. Okay. And that's how the next the GPUs can talk to each other directly without having to go through the CPU host processor. Okay, so we have PCIe, 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 PCIe. And then I presume the rest of this is power? That is correct. Awesome. Thank you, Pallavi. So now that we've covered the hardware, let's go ahead and move over to talk about workloads. And I'm going to bring in Liz, who is my go-to for anything around performance benchmarking or just general workload knowledge about these things. Hi, Liz. Hi, Mike. How are you? So uh, we have eight H100s here, 80 gigs memory each, 640 total. What are people doing with 640 gigs of HBM3 pulled together? Uh, well, you can do pretty much any kind of heavy training workload that you want, especially if you want to take advantage of all that memory. Uh, one thing that many customers are running on it is a workload called BERT, okay. which is a natural language processing workload. Okay, so I know ChatGPT. Yeah, What's BERT? it's very similar. Okay. They are both transformer workloads. Okay. But you can think of ChatGPT more as regurgitating information it has already learned in a human okay. format, whereas BERT is more about understanding humans talking to it. Wow. So very similar ideas, but different. You know, I keep hearing large AI training. So what are some other workloads other than uh, natural language processing that might be good for this? Sure. So another common workload is object detection. OK. So you can think of it as kind of like a dash cam video where you would select out the cars on the road or select out signs or humans or other pedestrians. So it's a really common workload in uh, self-driving cars okay. and other items like that. Awesome. And so we are going to offer both A100 8-way and H100 8-way in this system. So I imagine customers will figure out whether their, their workload requires one versus the other based on needing transformer? Based on whatever their workload is, it is very independent. Like it's, it really just depends on what the customer wants. To help the customer decide, we have submitted both the A100 and the H100 version of the system to the MLPerf benchmark. Okay. Results of which should be published very soon. Awesome. So you are actually sitting in the lab and publishing public results on our Dell systems with NVIDIA. Oh, yes, it's definitely. Awesome. It's really cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, Liz. I appreciate you coming by. You're welcome. All right, thanks for joining us to learn about the XE9680. For additional information, please go to Dell.com.